there are a lot of people to recognize for um, the three trials I'm about to show you. There, are, most of them are listed here, but I realize not actually all of them. The problem is pretty clear to most of you. So about three quarters of Americans who still smoke wish to quit. About half of those do actually try and quit um, at some point during the year, but most fail. Only two or three percent actually quit each year, and that's about the same number who take up smoking each year. So this is uh, the landmark study that Bob Galvin uh, referenced earlier that Kevin led, uh, which basically was conducted within GE, a little shy of 900 people. Half of them got a bundle of incentives worth $750, and half of them got usual care, which included access to nicotine replacement therapy, and basically tripled the quit rates at, I don't know if this works, I guess not, but at six months, tripled the quit rates to about 15%. Uh, in intention to treat analysis. So this is a study we just completed with CVS Caremark where we tried to build on that and say, well, could we take that same roughly $750, in this case $800 accounting for the six years of inflation, I'm actually not sure if that tracks with the CPI or not, but for whatever it's worth, take that $800 and basically deliver it in four different ways compared to usual care. So two ways oriented towards individuals, two ways oriented towards groups of six. The groups of six uh, accrue in terms of when they enroll and how close their target quit dates are to each other. So and in the individual uh, incentive programs, one is a straight incentive, just like in Kevin's original study. The other is a deposit contract where people deposit $150 and then the rest of the 800 gets put in that pot um, and then they get it back conditional on quitting. In the two group uh, rewards, you've got a collaborative arm where the amount of money that people get increases with the success of the group, and a competitive arm where people again chip in $150, and the amount of money they get back actually increases with the climbing success in the group, such that if you're the only one in the group of six that quits, you get everyone else's money as well. Um, so, so there are 2,500 people or so uh, that were randomized, about 500 per arm. And the usual care in this case uh, also included access to pharmacologic aids and nicotine replacement therapy. So as you might have already uh, guessed, um, people don't really like giving $150. And you can see dramatically different rates of acceptance. So uh, about 95 and 85% acceptance in the two reward arms and uh, just around 13, 14% in the deposit arms of people who are randomized to that arm who sign up um, actually make the deposit. Here are the intention to treat uh, analyses that are looking at all randomized people. And the, again, the primary outcome is at six months. And you can see that all four incentive arms are statistically better than usual care with a really remarkable similarity to Kevin's earlier study where we get about 15% uh, uh, sustained abstinence rate at six months. Uh, the deposit contracts don't do as well as the reward arms in the intention to treat analyses, and then these are just the uh, relapse rates uh, at 12 months. So that's intention to treat, and if you're sort of following along, you're saying, okay, so people don't uh, put down $150 very often, and yet they still do a lot better than usual care when all of them are assigned, so you infer that those who actually do put down $150 do really well, and indeed that's correct. Uh, at six months, those who actually deposit $150 quit at uh, upwards of 50%. Um, but that's clearly a selected sample. So we tried to get at this, in fact, I think we do get at this with a statistical approach called a complier average treatment effect analysis, which basically uses the randomization arm as an instrumental variable. I don't have nearly enough time to go through all the complex algebra here, but the overall I, uh, question that this analysis seeks to answer is, if you had people who would accept either deposits or rewards, and you just focused in on them, how much better are deposit contracts versus rewards uh, for those people? So removing selection effects from it. And basically, we find that, that it's a, about 13% better on an absolute scale. Thanks. So in summary, two large trials show that we can triple quit rates compared to usual care with uh, straight incentive programs oriented towards the individuals. I should have mentioned the group incentive programs were nominally but not statistically significantly better than the individual programs. Um, requiring $150 is unappealing. Um, if people do accept that program, then they do quite well. Um, so it raises this question of can we lower the amount of the incentive 
or even use a virtual incentive and get people to quit at higher rates in a true effectiveness uh, framework. And that's what we're trying to explore with Vitality now, getting past that 15% barrier um, using incentives, email messages, and e-cigarettes. So we've got, this is a five-arm trial that's scheduled to launch towards the end of this year. Uh, I won't go through the first three arms because they're sort of less relevant for this talk, but they are interesting in the sense that they incorporate uh, state-of-the-art email messaging to patients as well as uh, the options for e-cigarettes and focus just on the bottom two arms. One is a straight reward paradigm and then the, the fifth arm is a virtual deposit where we're basically telling people there's $600 at stake that's in their name. All they have to do is quit to get it in contradistinction with the reward-based arm where uh, we're basically telling them that you will only accrue money if you quit. So it's just a different framing of the exact same money. Um, and this is good. the other big innovation here is we're using an opt-out uh, enrollment scheme. So everyone will be in uh, by virtue of being uh, an employee at one of the companies and having been previously identified as being a smoker. And then we'll really be able to evaluate this in a true effectiveness framework, not just susceptible to the idiosyncrasies of who decides to enroll in the trial. 